Why don't you stand? Come on. Come on. Can you just lift your hands? I know we've worshiped for a while, but we're going to worship for a long time in heaven. We might as well get used to it. You know, there's more worship up there than preaching, right? Come on, lift your voice to the Lord. Come on, lift your voice. Every voice lifted. Come on. Just begin to bless the Lord all over this place. Come on, lift your voice. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Begin to cry out. Begin to cry out. Begin to cry out in the spirit all over this room. Come on, just begin to bless the Lord. Come on, just begin to bless the Lord. Mel fare ben ben dior moko. Jesus, we give you praise today. We give you praise and glory and honor and power and majesty. Jesus, you make our praise your home. So we gladly come in right now with praise on our lips. And we say, come and live here right now in Jesus' name. Come and make the civic your house right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, just begin to bless him. Are you thankful? If you're thankful, then just tell him. Just begin to tell him. Thank him for the blood. Thank him for the cross. Thank him for the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank him for saving you. Jesus, we love you. We love you. We love you. We give you glory and honor and praise and majesty. Would you just lift your hands here in this, in this atmosphere, Jesus? How we love your presence. How we love your name. Yeah, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, bright and morning star. Day spring, Lord. You're the day star. You're the one who, who made it all. You're the one who saved us when we wanted nothing to do with you. You're the one who set us free when we were slaves and you've made us love slaves. And we're grateful to this morning, Jesus. And we want you to know that. We want you to know that in the name of Jesus. We're going to go a little further. I believe the Holy Spirit is going to wreck some of you. I don't know about you, but I came for a head-on collision with the Son of God. I came for a head-on collision with the Son of God. Now listen to what the Bible says. The Bible says this, that God inhabits the praises of his people. He literally takes your praise, each individual praise here, and creates a house with it, and Jesus comes to live with us, and that's what we need right now. The Bible says that he's enthroned on the praises of his people. It means that Jesus literally has a seat and destroys everything that's not him under his feet when we lift the praise. So I want to tell you off the bat, here's what we're going to do. For at least a minute, you're going to lift the most sustained, loud, non-religious, obnoxious shout that is costly, that might force some of you into the aisles, that might offend the balanced person that, that brought you. But we're going to lift something that's irresistible to the Lord, okay, that's irresistible that will beckon him to come, that will give us an audience with God, because when Jesus comes, everything changes. This room changes, your life changes, your bondage just change, your chains fall off, sickness falls off, all of that stuff, depression, anxiety, it just goes when Jesus comes in the room. And this works every single time. He said this, that we enter his courts with praise. We enter his gates with thanksgiving. So I'm gonna count to three and you're gonna lift something guttural. You're gonna do what David did, something just completely undignified, something holy and beautiful to the Lord that has nothing to do with you and everything to do with Jesus. Are you ready? You guys ready? And I want you to blow it up on those drums, man. Are you ready? One, two, three, come on, yeah!
Come bow before the King of Kings. Let every tongue confess that He is the Lord. Lift up your shout. Let us join with the the kingdom yours is the power yours is the glory forever oh, tell him tell him yours is the kingdom yours is the power yours is the glory forever amen yours is the kingdom yours is the power yours is the glory forever and ever and ever yours is the kingdom yours is the power yours is the glory forever yours is the kingdom yours is the power
Is the power yours? Is the glory forever? Amen. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Lord, we love your presence, Jesus. We love you. We love your presence. We love you. We love you. We love everything about you. Would you just lift your hands in this glory? Come on. Holy Spirit. Rip through this auditorium like a fiery wave. Come, come, Lord, and blow through here like a lion with eyes of fire and fill everyone here with the power and fire of the Holy Spirit. If you're hungry, if you're hungry, just say, Jesus, touch me. Touch me. Tell him, say, touch me. Touch me, don't leave me out today, touch me. Oh, we love you. We love you. Yeah. Wow, we love you, Lord. We love you. Fill them with new wine today. In Jesus' name. Can you lift a shout again? Can you just lift one more? Can you do that? Oh, God. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. 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 Amazing, Jesus. Amazing, Lord. Amazing, Lord. Wow. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Wow. Are you grateful? Can you grab a seat? Why don't you go ahead and grab a seat? Come on. Wow. Thank you, guys. You're amazing. Can we let them know we love them? Can we let the worship team know that we're grateful? Wow. So honored to be here. I don't know why I'm saying this. I just feel like we need one more praise. Can you lift one more? Come on. Can you lift one more? Jesus. Wonderful Lord. Wow. Anyone feel the Lord in the room? Yeah. Well, pray for me. <laughs> I want to thank uh, Bill and Benny Johnson and the Bethel fathers and mothers for allowing us to come. Can we give the Lord <laughs> praise for Bill and Benny? Come on. Just the price, the price they've paid, and so all of us get to come and drink from this amazing well, and I consider myself a son of this house, so I'm just gone already, guys. You're going to have to really pray for me. This is going to be really hard to get through this. Say more for you. I need to preach. <laughs> I want to thank Tom and Leslie. Is Tom, there he is, <laughs> looking right at you asking if you guys are here. Tom and Leslie, stand up. Would you do that? Tom and Leslie Crandall. 
Leslie leads the first year BSSM, and Tom is the Young Saints pastor. And we just want to thank you guys for loving the Lord and being crazy enough to have me here. <laughs> but I love you all. I love you both so much. My wife's here. Jessica's here. Jess, would you stand up? Come on. Yeah. All three of uh, my children are here, but I won't make them stand up because they're at that age where they would hate me for that. But uh, they're here. And I want to thank Deborah for serving and being so amazing. Deborah, stand. Come on, stand up. Guys, this is Deborah. So, Tom, I have a prophetic word for you and for young saints. I heard the Lord say this morning, it was quite early and it was earlier than I wanted it to be. <laughs> but I heard the phrase, stadiums are coming uh, more quickly than you think. And that this gathering is actually a seed somehow for stadiums across America. That God is gonna give the Young Saints movement under your leadership and Leslie's leadership, stadiums and arenas that are, and I want all of you stretch your hands right now. Come on, let's get in on this. That God is gonna give you a favor to acquire and fill arenas and stadiums. And while the background work won't be so easy initially, filling them and paying for them is gonna be easier than you could have ever imagined. And God is gonna surround you with a company of firebrands. In fact, he's gonna surround you with more than one brother and sisters, brothers and sisters who also have eyes of fire, who you feel like you've been cut from the same fraternity and sorority. And they're gonna breathe holiness. And they're gonna spit fire when they preach, literally. And, and, and holiness will flow from the cross and from the wounds of Jesus in these stadiums. It'll be a, a move of God rooted, rooted in the gospel and the holy fire of the Holy Spirit. And it will turn a generation, it will turn millennials back to the cross and they'll find beauty there. So Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you that stadiums are ahead and that the team is even being formed here and what they're learning here in Reading will be a prototype to fill arenas and stadiums around America as we walk into this new Jesus movement. Amen. 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 Tom, am I allowed off the platform ever? Okay. <laughs> Good. I, I want to talk to you this morning, and I'm really gonna ask for your undivided attention for about 15 to 20 minutes. I want to have the most important conversation we could ever have. And the conversation is about your soul. Your soul is the most precious holy, beautiful thing in your life. Your soul is costly, and Jesus is after it with fiery love. You need to understand, and as much as I value events, we host events around the world, you need to understand that you merely coming here as wonderful as it is, your attendance does not secure your eternity. You attending church does not secure your eternity. You listening to worship music, you being a worship leader, you being a preacher, that doesn't secure your eternity either. Maybe you're like, man, I've been, I've been baptized in water. The Bible doesn't say, for God so loved the world that he sent a baptismal tank. Well, that one flustered some of you. You say, man, I prayed the prayer. I, 
I prayed the prayer. But the Bible doesn't say, for God so loved the world, that he sent the sinner's prayer. Now, we use the sinner's prayer in all of our events. But I'm here to tell you that prayers don't save. Jesus saves. And I, man, I feel the fire of God here to pierce and peel back the onion and get into the depths of your heart today. God is after you. Not because he's angry with you. It's because he loves you. Jesus wants you. He wants you. He's screaming for you through me. For those of you who know me, I'm not a screamer, but today I feel the passion of God calling you home. Calling you home. Your pastor can't save you. The four walls of your church can't save you. Gospel tracts can't save you. Growth tracts don't save you. You say, dude, I went down to the altar. Altars don't save you either. You say, I responded to the call. Calls don't save you either. You have to find Jesus at the altar. And you've got to hear his voice in the call. And this is what I sense, that God is pulling back the bow of heaven right now and releasing an arrow of loving truth into the depths of your heart. When Jesus comes into a room... It is measurable. And if you can, I'm gonna ask that you guys grab a seat and don't move around right now. Just hold it for 15 minutes, trust me. The first introduction that John the Baptist declared to Israel regarding Jesus was this. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Jesus came to be experienced as the lamb. And his blood is powerful enough to wash away every sin ever committed, past, present, present, or future. The precious lamb of God shed his precious blood for you. And this is what you need to know. When Jesus steps on the scene, it is absolutely measurable. He is king over sickness. That means sickness leaves in Jesus' name today. We're going to see miracles. No doubt about it. That means depression goes when he who is anointed with the oil of gladness comes. It's all measurable. The air knows when Jesus walks in a room. The atmosphere knows. The Bible doesn't say that the place, that the walls, that they, that the walls shook when they prayed in the book of Acts. It says the place they prayed shook. God can shake the air when he comes into a room. God will shake the stuff you don't even see. God will shake the stuff you don't see about you. And that's why the Bible says, you alone know the hearts of men, O oh Lord. You alone. You think you know you. But friend, it takes you getting into this presence to even know what's going on in there. Jesus is the x-ray machine and the surgeon. You need him to know what's up and what's wrong, and only he can fix it. You can't face the holy throne of God on your parents' merit. Or on your favorite preacher's merit. It's just going to be you and Jesus. You say, I know that. What's the big deal? Well, let me just tell you what that scene will look like. Number one. You will stand before the Ancient of Days who has no beginning and no end, and he is not your homeboy. Does he love you? Yes. But he loves you enough to blow the sin right out of your life this morning, to just completely deliver you and set you free. You'll stand before the Ancient of Days who is like complete light, who has no shadow or turning within him. The floor will be a sea of glass mingled with fire. I want you to think of that. A sea of glass mingled with fire and a rainbow around his throne that is perfect emerald. And he has living creatures around him covered in eyes. Guys, this is no average get together. And there are 24 elders seated around him. And every time one of the angelic hosts declare who the Lord is, these elders throw their crowns on the ground and cry out, Worthy, worthy, worthy. Holy, 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 holy. It's amazing. 
this is amazing. And I feel that this is something we've lost, something we've lost in our generation. The fact that we're going to give an account, you will give an account. Whether you know Jesus or you don't, we will all give an account for those things done in the body. Now John 1.12, you don't have to turn there, just, just, just look at me. John 1.12 says this, For as many as received him, that him is Jesus, for as many as received him, to them he gave the right to be called children of God. You have to receive the person. You have to receive the him, the actual Jesus. It's not receiving the prayer. It's not even receiving the lifestyle. You have to receive Jesus if you're going to live the lifestyle. That him is a real person. He likes things. He doesn't like things. He sees you right now. Before you were ever born, Jesus knew you'd be in that seat right now. I want you to think of that. Before you were ever born, the Lord knew you'd be facing what you're facing, sitting right there. Before your parents were ever born, before your grandparents were ever born, the Lord knew you'd be right there, right now. You have to receive him. And this old man, Simeon, is holding little baby Jesus when he's dedicated, and he looks down at this baby and says something, Lord, my eyes have seen your salvation. Listen to me. Salvation is not a system. Salvation is not a method. Salvation is not a six-step process. Salvation has eyes. Salvation has a hole, a wound, I should say, on his side, holes in his hands, holes in his feet. Salvation has a beard and hair down to about here like wool. Salvation has eyes of fire because he is fire. Salvation has feelings, salvation laughs, salvation cries. And here's the best part, salvation is here right now. He's here right now. He's here. How close is he, Michael? This is what Jesus said. If two or three gather in my name, I am there, even in the midst of them. Even in the midst of them. What's the key? How do we get Jesus to come? We come in his name. We don't come today in the name of, much as I love this place, it's just my home church. And I don't even live here. <laughs> I live across the country. But we don't come today in the name of Bethel. And we don't come in the name of Young Saints. And we don't come in the name of Michael. We come in the name of Jesus. That's why we sing to him. That's why we sing to him. Because at some point in that song, Jesus becomes really real. And that's all it takes is that moment where everything just changes. Everything switches when we look at Jesus. How close is he? He's here. But even closer than that, he's in the midst of us. That's what he promised. I'll be there even in the midst of you. I want you to elbow that person next to you. Say, he's closer to me than you are. Now look back at me. Now look back at me. Jesus in the midst. That means he's closer than the air you're breathing. He is the air you're breathing. He's the one who's keeping you alive right now. That's what the Bible says, that he holds all things together by the word of his power. It's Jesus' heart and word that is keeping your body intact right now. You say, man, I'm pretty sure I met him. Friend, if you met him, you know you met him. I'm not talking about a thought. Jesus is not a thought. He's a person. How here is he? He's very here. He's more here than you are. You say, man, I know I met the guy down the street. I know I met the guy at the gas station. I know I met my youth pastor. I'm, I think I met Jesus. You know if you met Jesus. He's the Ancient of Days with an incredible resume. There's nobody like him. Can I tell you about him? Can I tell you about him? No. Can I tell you about him? Okay. The Bible says in the beginning was the word. Jesus is not a creation. 
He's just always been. He's phenomenal. And the Bible says, and the word was God. He's God. And he still is God. And the Bible says, and he was with God. That means he's a personal Jesus. If he can be with someone, that means he can be with you. He has thoughts. He has feelings, man. He has a heart. And for eternity after eternity after eternity, he's just staring at the Father, blown away with the beauty and faithfulness of the Father. And the Father's just blown away with the beauty and faithfulness of Jesus. Why is he blown away with Jesus? Because Jesus always says yes to him. The nature of the Christian life is yes, Lord. Not I'll try. Not I'll bow down to this website. Not I'll choose to live in a chain and hopefully walk into church filled with guilt and condemnation and expect my pastor to get me free. Your pastor doesn't have holes in his hands. Only Jesus can do that. It's measurable. This is measurable. So the Father's going, you're beautiful because you always say yes. And Jesus is going, you're a wonderful Father. You're the faithful one. And it's all by the power of the Holy Spirit. And at some point, the Father said this, I've made them in my image. Only I can fix them. So because Jesus is the one who always said yes, Jesus said, I'll go, I'll do it. I'll leave this beautiful fellowship. I'll step down out of heaven. I'll trade this robe, this heavenly robe that fills heaven's temple with glory, and I'll trade it for a robe of mockery. Here, take my crown, Father. I'll replace it with a crown of thorns. I'll go. It's who I am. I always say yes. And so Jesus steps down on the scene. You say, it's amazing that God became a baby. And it is. It's phenomenal that Jesus became a baby, but I got something better for you. He became a seed in the womb of a woman. You talk about humility. You talk about being humble, that he took up residence in the womb of a 14-year-old virgin named Mary. Some of you feel unseen. I didn't get my worship song. I didn't get to lead. No one looks at me. I didn't, my gift. What about my gift? It's not about our gift. It's about Jesus. It's not about our following. It's not about social media. It's not about being seen. It's about him. If the God of the universe, the formless word, became a baby, a seed in the womb of a woman, it's really hard to say no to that. And he lived, and he walked the streets, and he ran for his life, and went to Egypt, and he said yes to his father every single day, every second of every day. And the Bible says he learned obedience and grew in favor and stature and wisdom. And one day, his friend, the Holy Spirit, 30 years later, they got to meet up again at the Jordan. And that spirit empowered him, the Holy Spirit empowered him to show us what God is like. Guys, look at me, look me in the eyes. Never again do you have to wonder what God is like. Never again. Jesus has settled the argument. He settled the score. Jesus is the perfect representation of your heavenly Father. How does he feel about sickness? He empties cities and villages of the sick. How does he feel about poverty? Man, he can pay his bills with a coin from a fish's mouth. How does he feel about the poor? Oh, he just provides for them and multiplies bread and fish. How does he feel about the broken and those who have been riddled with sin? Man, he sets them free and tells the accusers, you who are without sin, cast the first. This is what God is like. And ultimately, listen very closely. Ultimately, he'd allow his body to be tied to a pole, stripped naked, Maybe you say, I've never heard this. You haven't heard the gospel. Stripped naked and literally skinned alive through a cat of nine tails, a leather whip with metal balls on it and metal spikes that would rip his muscle out. He wasn't whipped. He was torn to pieces. Ribs exposed, organs exposed, yet they still tied him. Guys, he didn't need them to tie him to that pole. He would have held on for you the whole time. Yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing love. This thing is supposed to trip you out. It's supposed to stretch you. It's supposed to amaze you. It's supposed to short circuit your brain where you feel really weird. 
just thinking about it. You just say, I'm not gonna be okay after thinking about this. That's the whole point. God is wanting to wound us with love for Jesus. Completely smash us, to kick us in the hardness of our hearts, break us down and give us a limp and pick us back up again until people see Jesus in our eyes. And after he paid for our sickness and took our shame and we stripped naked so you wouldn't have to walk in shame, they offered him a cross, a heavy cross, a jagged cross, a rugged cross. And he said yes to it, even though he had no skin left on his back, and put it on his back and gladly climbed a mountain. Jesus wasn't crucified in private. He was crucified at the busiest intersection in God's holy city. And he was suspended, suspended in the sky and became a bridge between heaven and your hell. And literally the suspended, mutilated, bloodied Lamb of God, outstretched, nailed to a tree, because this whole thing went south in a tree, and with a tree in a garden called Eden, and now Jesus would settle the score and rectify the deal, while a living tree brought death to Adam, a dead tree would bring life to you. This is outstanding wisdom. This is the gospel, man. And so Jesus dripped every drop of blood so that every sin would be paid for. And the Bible says, I poured my life out in Psalm 22. Poured out his blood. Every drop had somebody's name on it in here. His beard pulled and ripped from his face, a crown of thorns in so deep that it pierced his skull. Psalm 88 says, my eyes waste away due to affliction. They beat him so badly he couldn't even open his eyes anymore, yet he could see you in his heart. He said, I don't know. Never heard this. Never heard anything like this. But you need Jesus today. And as he was suspended, they took a spear and pierced his side and it went up into his heart. And the Bible says, water and blood flowed right out of that side. And just like he took Adam before Adam was a living being and laid him down and breathed into his nostrils and Adam became a living being and he said, it's not good that you be alone. And finally he removed a rib from Adam's side and Eve came forth so that Adam would have a wife. Jesus' side was opened so that blood and water would come forth so that he would marry you. <laughs> he loves you. He loves you. And after he gave up his spirit, because man wouldn't mourn him because he was popular while he was healing them, not so popular on a cross, because man wouldn't mourn him, the Bible says the sky grew dark and the Father mourned him. Because man wouldn't mourn him, the rocks exploded at the foot of the cross. The earth mourned him because man didn't think there was much value in this one hanging on a tree. And Jesus said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit, at which point the Bible says he went into the underworld and destroyed the devil. Listen to me, and destroyed the devil. It is no longer a contest. So the Bible says he rendered Satan powerless. I need somebody on keys. Rendered, rendered Satan powerless through the work of the cross. If you're bound by the devil, if you're addicted to porn, if you're addicted to perversion and lust, you need Jesus to come in and render the devil powerless in your life right now. Here's the deal, he already has, he's just waiting on your yes. Then after he was done embarrassing the devil, just a good, like a, a pad, just a pad. Embarrassing the devil, not helping him, not negotiating with him, embarrassing the devil, completely defeating him. The Bible says he took captivity captive, took his friends 
those saints who'd gone on into the underworld and he blew through the ground three days later. And the Bible says he sat up like the lion that he is and shook off death and walked out of that tomb with the angelic hosts because he has conquered death. He has conquered your death. He has defeated your death. The early church used to say this, we are the church. <laughs> we are the saints, those who laugh at death. Did you hear me? They said, we are the church. We are the saints. We are those who laugh at death. We laugh at it. The whole world fears it. The whole world's doing everything they can do to just stay alive. They'll do anything just to stay alive a little longer. Most Christians follow Jesus for most of their life to go to heaven. When it comes time to go to heaven, they're afraid to go to heaven. And we look at that moment and we laugh at it knowing that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Death is a joke. We laugh at it. We gladly lay our lives down because Jesus sat up out of that grave and rendered death powerless. You say, what do I, what do I need to do? What, what about me? What about my issues? Guys, look, listen, listen. Jesus did not die so you'd be a slave. That's not why he suffered. He didn't suffer so you could fall and get up and fall and get up and fall and get up and spend your whole life falling, falling, falling. Falling should be the rarity. Walking should be commonplace. Victory is why he died. You say, how do I know? How do I know if I'm born again? Are you free? Not are you attending this event? No, no. Are you free? Jesus said whom the sun sets is free in? It's measurable. Or are you a slave? How do I know if I'm a slave? Jesus said he who sins is a slave to sin. If you can't control your sin, there is a freedom problem. And Jesus came to set sinners free. Of course it's measurable. Wearing your shirt is measurable. You felt your car seat on the way here. Not a little kid's car seat, the adult one. You felt the seat, you feel your shirt. You feel the person next to you. Of course you feel Jesus when he comes to live in your heart. So Michael, what do I do? You receive him, him in all his ways. Even the stuff you don't get and the stuff you don't like. Maybe there's stuff you can't figure out about him. You've got to receive that too. And as you receive him to you, he will give the right to be called a son of God today. Now listen, listen, listen very closely. Listen very closely. He's not going to change your life this morning. He's going to replace your life this morning. It's going to replace it. Because a changed Michael is still a hellbound Michael. He's going to take you with all your chains and your filth and your anxiety and your fear and your shame and your bondage. And he's going to, as you receive him today by faith, he's going to take you and nail you to a tree. His tree. And when he nails you to that tree, the old you is going to die. He's not going to fix the old you. He's not going to counsel the old you. He's going to murder the old you today. He's going to murder it. <laughs> and then, yeah, man, I need the drummer. I need the drummer too. It's about to really hit in here. Listen, listen, listen. And then, as he kills the old you, he's going to inject his life into your body. So whether you work at In-N-Out flipping burgers or you preach crusades, you'll have a fountain that never, ever moves again. 
Are you flipping those burgers going, oh, Jesus, I love these burgers. The fountain that never moves. And your body will become the house of the living God forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And you'll be his. And he will never leave you. And he will marry you today and put a ring on your finger. And you'll face eternity with peace and you'll be one who laughs at death. Stand to your feet. Would you do that? Stand to your feet, quickly. I've got all the time in the world. I want every head bowed and eye closed. Every head bowed and eye closed. You say, Michael, today's my day. I'm done. I'm done playing the game. I'm done being a slave. I'm done playing with religion. I'm done, I'm done being completely taken over and unable to control my body. I want Jesus to wash me clean and set me free. I want him to come live inside of me. I want you to get out of your seat and run down here right now. Get out of your seat right now. You say, this is it. This is my moment. I'm coming. I'm coming. Look at this. Thank you, Father. Come on. Come on down here. Come on down here and clog the aisles. Come on. Come on down and get free today. Come on down and get free. Modified. Thank you, God. Oh, come on, lift the praise. You say, this is it. You say, this is it. I'm coming to give my life to Jesus 100%. Look, man, they're storming down these, down these stairs right now. Can you pick up those keys just a little, just a little bit, please? Come, come to the Lord. Come to the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The gospel, the gospel of power. Wow. Keep coming, keep coming. This is beautiful. Keep coming, this is holy. Thank you, Father. Thank you for what you're doing. Look, they're backed up all the way up the... Oh, the Lord is beautiful. He's too beautiful to say no to. He's too beautiful. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Keep coming. We have all day. we we'll wait for you. This is your moment. You come to the one who has eyes of fire, who will set you on fire today. Come on, come down, guys. Make room for them coming in the back. This is wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The gospel. Thank you, Lord. Come to a fountain that still flows, that drips from Emmanuel's veins. The blood that speaks a better word. Speaks a better word than the accuser of the brethren over your life. The blood speaks righteous now. The blood will speak holy. The blood will speak mine. And your sin will die today. Your sin will die today. If you didn't come forward, I want you to stretch your hands. If you're on the balcony, stretch your hands and cover these people in prayer. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Can we just thank the Lord quickly? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. If you came forward, I want you to look in my eyes. If you wish you came forward and you, there's no room, man, take a step to the left or right to get God's attention. That's what Jesus said. Jesus said, if you deny me before men, I'll deny you before my Father and his holy angels. If you, if you accept me, acknowledge me before men, I will acknowledge you before the Father. If you wish you came down and you didn't, and there's just no room. I want you to just wave your hands at me. That's enough for the Lord. If you wish you did. Yeah, look, there's hands. This is wonderful. Jesus, grab every single one. Grab every single one. Grab every one. Thank you. Thank you. Now look at me if you, if you came forward to receive the Lord. It's not about so much what we say while that's important. This is about who you're talking to. So today, you're not going to speak to a prayer. You're going to close your eyes and the best you can, speak directly to your Heavenly Father. 
And the Bible says this, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And when you leave today, everything will change. You'll no longer be just a servant. You'll be a son or daughter. Are you ready? Close your eyes now. Let's talk to the Lord. Repeat after me loudly and boldly. Heavenly Father, I come to you a sinner in need of a Savior. Wash me with the blood of Jesus. Forgive my sin. Jesus, you are the Son of God. You died on the cross for my sin. You were buried, and you've been raised to life because you're God Almighty. So today, Lord, I give my life to you, me for you, and you for me. Here I am, Lord. Set me free forever. I am yours, and you are mine. Amen. Can we lift pr a praise in here? Come on. Can we lift something? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Just close your eyes right where you are. All over this place, just close your eyes. Everyone, just close your eyes. Lift your hands to heaven. Lord Jesus, I release now the presence and power of the Holy Spirit to fall. Someone bring me this young man to fall, to fall right, this, this guy here to fall in this room all over, all over, all over, all over. Just receive now, just receive, receive all over this room. Hit those drums, please, hit those drums. Just receive, just receive, just receive all over this room. Receive the fire of the Holy Spirit. Come up here, young man, jump up here by yourself. I need a catcher. You in the denim, in the denim, come up here, come up here, come up here. Receive, receive, receive the power of the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit. Just close your eyes and receive. I need a catcher. Father, fire on him. Light him up. Use him to win the lost in Jesus' name. Mad ba 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 ba. Hit those drums, man. Hit those drums. Hit those drums. Mad ba 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 ba. Fire of heaven. Flow, 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 flow. Bring this girl to me. Flow, 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 flow. Jesus, do it. This girl right here. Fire of heaven, flow, flow. Jesus, fill her with the Holy Ghost. Oh, lift your voice, lift your voice, Jesus. Come here, little girl. Come here. Prophet of the Lord, burn. Bring me this girl right there. 
Angeles. No more games. What's your name? Ray. Ray, get up. Help him up. Fry him. Oh, tattoo his heart with the face of God. Enough games, Ray. Preach the gospel. Malfar be 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 prantums. Malfar be be be. When the lost burn, burn, Ray, burn, burn. <laughs> Milfar. <laughs> give me my Bible. It's right there. Give me, give me, give me my Bible. Tom, am I good? Am I okay? Preach the word. Man of God. Preach the word, Ray. Preach the word of the Lord. Put the word in him, let him eat it. Come in sweet and challenge him in bitterness. Rababa, Melufara. Preach the word, Ray. Fire on all of you. Fire on all of you. Fire on all of you out there. Fire on all of you. Come on, make this your moment. Grab the hem of his garment. Grab the hem. Mare fenti ora la bamban. Istandar meko. Ribendio. 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 Just forget about everything right now. This is why you came. Hia santier fe contod mukontie you prophetess. So just do it. Mare sintiela far. Come here. More. More. Tell him Jesus more. More. That girl, she's got, yeah, yeah, bring her. It doesn't matter what they said about you, sweetie. It doesn't even matter what they talk and what they say. And when it pierces your heart and breaks you down and makes you feel bad, I cancel it and rip it off you. It doesn't even matter. It doesn't matter, girl in the LA cap, bring her. It doesn't matter, fire. Fire, rain, fire. It doesn't matter about you either. It doesn't matter. Jesus sets you free now. It doesn't matter. Free. Free. I cancel every lie. Every lie. I rebuke every lying voice, every lying devil. In Jesus' name, the blood of the Lamb will flow through you, daughter of the Lord. It's been canceled. It's been canceled. I cancel it all. In Jesus' name. Be free. Stretch your hands, pray in tongues. Be free, sweetie. Be free. Let him do it. 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 Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Is Leslie here? Les, 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 Les. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Can you just pray? Pray over her. Bless her. As a mom, bless her, Les. Jesus, we love you. Come here, sweetie, in the yellow. Just 
Close your eyes. Begin to bless the Lord all over the room. Just bless the Lord. Just bless Him. That's right. Just love on Him. Just love on Him. Just love on Him. With your mouth, begin to love on Him. Sing in the Spirit. Sing in the Spirit all over, all over the room. That's right. Lift your voice. As you bless the Lord, He touches her. You touch His heart. He moves His hand. See? Wow. Can somebody move this? You in the pink. Come. Everyone, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Sing in the spirit. Yel fare. Yel fare. Yel fare. That's it. in this atmosphere her whole life. That what she sees on this platform would be the norm for her. Oh, woman of God. That this will be your life, Addie. It'll be your life. Your feet of the anointing. Sounds of revival. Your atmosphere in the norm. Oh, there it goes. Calling. The calling Christ. Calling through you, Addy. That's your destiny. The calling Christ. Calling through Addy. Make straight the way of the Lord. This is your world and your cloud. And this is where you'll live, Addy. Right here. Right here. I release the anointing of the Holy Spirit over your life. That you would walk. That you'd walk in the anointing. Special to the Lord. God, fair, 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 fair. God in heaven. Oh, yes. Release the wonders of old again in his life. The wonders that flowed and came so quickly years ago. Release the wonders again. The wonders, the, the simple childlike wonders again. Lord, the, the stuff that's offensive to the religious. Release it again. Oh, Jesus. Release your grace and your mercy. Ba, 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 ba. Bare, sonoro, ketere. Jess, can you come up here, Jess, and start praying for these girls? Start praying for these young girls. Fire from heaven. Kistan del fare. Kistan del fare. Come here, Ted. Kistan del Fara. Come here, sweetie. Come down. Father in heaven. Jesse, come here. Father, I release 
what you've given me over Taya, God. That graces would collide in her life. That a healing flow would drip off her mouth like a river of oil. The devils would quake when she opens her mouth. And that you'd call her into the chamber. That you'd give her songs that are literally being sung in heaven. And that she'd pull them down. I see people jumping out of wheelchairs when you open your mouth. I see the lame walking and jumping off stretchers. I see it, I see it, girl, I see it, I see it clear as day. Oh, pray in tongues and agree with me. I see it, I see it, I see it. I see the heavens open over you. Oh. Mm. You fiery one. You fiery one. You fiery one. No, it's not, it's not intense, it's holy. That's who you are. You just want him. You want to you call people to holiness. That's what you're doing. Don't you change the dial. Turn it up, girl. Turn it up. Fadi. Father, release on her what you've given Jesse and I. Do it. What so many before us walked in, let her carry it merge these inheritances in this life right now. Do it. God, put the cross on Tom. Stretch your hands now and agree with me. Put the cross on Tom's back. Offer him the cross. God gives us a cross, Tom, and the cross gives us God. Walk with it, Tom. Walk with it. Feel the weight, the beautiful weight of the Son of God that's easy and light, but it's there all the time. Joseph's cup of many colors. Wrapping you. Wrapping you. Lift the cross. Lift Christ crucified. Preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Do it, Tom. Do it. Chara, Chara. Brenny and Braden, come here. Brenny and Braden, lay hands on Mr. Tom. Come pray for Tom. This is prophetic. This is prophetic. Come over here. Put your hands on him. That Tom will carry the cross of Christ crucified to this generation. Is the kingdom yours? 
yours is the power yours is the glory forever amen yours is the kingdom yours is the power yours is the glory forever amen yours is the kingdom yours is the power yours is the glory forever amen yours is the kingdom yours is the power yours is the glory forever amen yours is the kingdom yours is the power is the glory forever amen yours is the kingdom yours is the power yours is the glory forever amen yours is the kingdom yours is the power yours is the glory Is the power yours? Is the glory forever and ever and ever? Wherever your kingdom reigns,